Do you want to watch the eclipse with Bigfoot? There's a map for that. Today on the show. Happy Monday, Scallywags! Back at guys, it! Hope you guys had a great weekend. Did you have a good weekend? I wasn't too bad. Not Ooh, too bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty good. We, we did some things over the weekend. Yeah, we did. We did. We took a little trip. We took a trip on the road, yeah. so stay tuned for that. Yeah, so you guys will probably get to uh, see that next weekend. Uh, watch for that probably on Saturday, I'm going to guess. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but as it is on Mondays, uh, well, first of all, let me point out, uh, you might have noticed the uh, kind of freakiness, whatever. Uh, but I've had several viewer requests to wear the contacts. I wear these a lot uh, outside of the show. So if you're wondering why I've got the contacts on today, it's just because, well, people have requested it. So yeah. give it them what you want. Uh, having said that, if you've got a suggestion, something for us to cover or, you know, do. whatever, do. Challenge. Challenges. Do yeah, it. put those in Comment. the comments. And uh, we're also going to start, uh, since it is kind of a news day on Mondays, we're kind of dressing the part. So... Why don't you uh, kick us off with your first story there, Dean? Well, you know, uh, first story I've got is going to be from Canada. Uh, Apparently, a man in Canada accidentally set his house on fire while trying to get rid of a wasp's nest. Burning with fire. Yep. Fire crews responded to a fire at home in Thunder Bay to find a man had poured gasoline on the nest and set it ablaze. That blaze went everywhere in his house, starting at the basement and going up. Uh, what happened here was kind of an unfortunate accident. Uh, Kaplanis told the News Watch. The homeowners were dealing with a wasp's nest on the outside of the house, and the father and homeowner thought he was doing a good job of getting rid of the nest by pouring gasoline and lighting it on fire. That's what caused the interior portion of the house tonight. You think? Did you know Did you know burning gasoline might burn other things? It might. Uh, we, we should probably cover this on Worst Week We Wednesday. should probably. I mean, this could have totally um, been another story. He ends up saying that it was a costly lesson learned that applying gas and lighting it would not be recommended at any time things go wrong in a hurry. Mm. Don't play with fire. Don't kill it with fire. Yep. I'm going to stick around in Canada here and uh, take it from fire to the weather. But um, a determined dad that won't let a tornado stop him from Uh, mowing the lawn. A tornado. Because when it's got to be done, it's got to be be done. done. And uh, so here's the hoping that the winds at least, you know, blew all the clippings away. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. But uh, check this picture out, guys. That is a man that, that is just determined to get things done. When he needs to do it, he's going to do it. Yeah. Don't, don't let the weather interfere. The breathtaking photo captured this Canadian man casually mowing his lawn as a massive tornado whirled around in the distance. Cecilia Wessels said that she was at her home in Three Hills, Alberta, uh, when she snapped the now, now viral photo of her determined husband. The, uh, the tornado was about a mile, about a mile and a quarter out, um, and it was moving eastwards. There was very little wind in the backyard, so he thought, you know, it wasn't raining, no big wind, so hey, get it done. Just do it. Said he was keeping an eye on it, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's... Like dads do. You hey, gotta, I wonder... I got this. Don't I, worry about it. See, what I want to know is, is how much was the wife nagging him to get it done? <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm just kidding, guys. Just kidding. <laughs> It was too easy of a setup. I couldn't, that was, could that was, not that was go on there. A tee. That was on a tee. Yeah. You, you had to. You had to. T- you had to take it. <laughs> that was on a tee. Oh yeah. So yeah. 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 I just. I. Man, just determination. My yard is mean, raggedy is... looking. I got to <laughs> get it done. And that is an awesome picture. I love that. You know That's... what? What they didn't notice was the the witch flying in the background. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Destroying the Munchkin village. Yeah. So anyway, we're going from Canada and your all, little lawnmower too. all the way to China. China. Apparently Chinese buyers don't like that new car smell, Spoo. Did you know that? Why? I don't know. I love opening a brand new car and smelling that non- I don't drive it or nothing. I just get in there. <sighs> oh, okay, that's enough of the hit for the day. Anyway, unlike many Americans, Chinese customers are not fans of the new car smell. We need to have um, a, uh, an intervention for his new car smell problem. And probably, yeah. But get this, Ford has hired 18 professional sniffers to go to the Chinese marketplace and make sure the new cars don't smell like We've new cars. We've talked about sniffers in a, in a previous episode. Scoochie. 
I probably couldn't hear you. What? what? Was it specifically car sniffers? No, it was body odor sniffers, actually. Yeah, but, uh, but, but still. still, someone who gets paid to smell mm -hmm. things. Last year? That's going to be my job. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong floating, line of business. Little floating head. Just... <laughs> oh, look at that. Uh, last year, 28 million cars Delightful. were sold in China, making it the world's largest automobile marketplace. But the top reason Chinese car buyers point for rejecting a potential new car is how it smells. Uh, they don't want their cars to have that beloved new car smell. So Ford is hiring 18 smell testers for the Chinese research labs. Their job is to stick their nose on floor mats, on floor mats, uh, carpeting, seats, and steering wheels, all of it trying to eliminate what many Americans is the smell of freedom and the open road. While we conducted a very unscientific Twitter poll asking you to where you stand on the issue, more than 1,400 of you responded. This is, goes on for uh, the NPR news. Um, as of Friday, most Americans love that new car smell. Back to you, Spook. <laughs> and now sports. Or, or not. Okay, no. yeah. Um, I'm going to take it back to Texas and a teacher that did something really stupid. What? Oh, God, yeah. Uh, in a, uh, a Texas middle school principal plans to launch an investigation after a seventh grade student was named most likely to be a terrorist in a mock award ceremony. Wow. Uh, Lizzie Seriously. Villanueva, a 13 year old student at Anthony Aguirre Junior High in Houston, told Click to Houston that the teacher said most likely to become a terrorist and she said my name and she gave me this. The uh, little award there. Uh, oh Elizabeth uh, received the award in advanced learning program that's supposed to help kids prepare for college. The teacher, who was not named, uh, told the students that the award was supposed to be funny. But um, Elizabeth, she wasn't, she wasn't laughing. Here, uh, I'm going to name you most likely to be a terrorist. Here's your copy of the yeah. Anarch Anarchist See, Now, handbook. what this doesn't say, let me kind of skim ahead here. <laughs> It doesn't say, uh, like, what her race is. Uh, and and that's, that's the part that I'm wondering about. Was, is she Middle Eastern? Is yeah. that what brought that on? I mean, that doesn't sound like a Middle Eastern name or anything. But um, or there's, there is a video here, so um, don't really know if it's got anything in it. But, uh, and, of course, it wants to just give me an advertisement. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah, if you're a teacher, don't don't call your kids yeah, that's, that's a not, potential terrorist. It's not even remotely. No, that's not, that's not okay. Uh, no, not even close. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, here's your award. Thanks for trying. Uh, I'm going to go blow something up. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, and, and what does that say to you as as the teacher? Um, you know, I'm, I'm educating a potential terrorist. Maybe you should do a better job. Maybe you should do a better job. Or quit. You know. <laughs> um, like and and, and yeah, she doesn't look necessarily uh, Middle she, Eastern. No, she looks, she, looks, she looks like... Maybe like Puerto Rican? Puerto Rican? Something? Uh, Possibly. But it doesn't uh, matter. She, regardless of the race, the teacher shouldn't have done it. Yeah. We're, we're supposed to be teaching these kids to be functioning adults. Not to be all... Um, my shirt's getting punched. Silence. Yeah. I kill you. I kill you. <laughs> you going so back to going China. To, we're going back to China because apparently Chinese. there's a Chinese restaurant in uh, the Zhang, Zhangjing province Zhangjing. that offers, get this, discounts on your food based on your cup size. Something's beeping in the background. We're, we're going to die. Uh, larger the breasts, the bigger the discount. That's the controversial promotion a restaurant in the Zhangjing province of China offered this much. The eatery called Trendy Shrimp. Trendy Shrimp. Prompted fuel. It's a very trendy name. <laughs> Fuhr, oh. Prompted fuel are. Uh, as the provocative price cuts, which an incentive incised. I cannot speak. The incised local called discriminatory and vulgar. Sounds like they got a Hooters moved in. Nah. Uh, Trinity Shrimp is located in the mall in the Hangzhou advertised the unusual discount of a poster placed outside the restaurant. They actually have a picture of the pro, uh, of it right there. Uh, uh, placed outside the restaurant on July 31st, the Evening Post reported the whole city is looking for, and I quote in capitals, breasts. 
The uh, placard receives the accompanying image of animated female characters with varying breast sizes on a table, showing how much the price cut a woman would get based on her bra size. Interesting fact, China's opposite, the lower the number, the bigger the discount. That's why on the picture it shows A cups being higher and the G mm. cups being absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Um, the owner actually um, backed this idea, saying he has increased his uh, patronage by twenty percent. Well, I mean, so, you know, I to mean, be fair, I mean, it, it, what's what's stopping women from you know stuffing the bra a little? Well, you know. I don't know what it costs to eat out there, but wow, no. that's amazing. But anyway, so yeah, if you want free food and you have or discounted food or discounted food, go, if you go got to the boobs, go to China. Yeah, yeah. So that's and uh, if you if you uh, if you're looking forward to the eclipse, which a uh, little uh, throw this out there, we are actually going to attempt. Not sure like how how uh, good the visibility of the eclipse is going to be from here, but we are going to try to go uh, live and do an actual full live. Uh, broadcast from the eclipse. Mm -hmm. So, well, not from the eclipse, but during from the surface from the, of the sun. sun. Uh, but during the eclipse, <laughs> so uh, the show goes to the sun. Yes. Can you and do then, that and your what? This show goes to the sun. Oh, <laughs> today on the show, a special broadcast live from the surface of the sun. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so anyway, uh, anyway. <laughs> Watching a total eclipse of the sun is a once-in-a-lifetime experience for most people. And you know what? So is seeing a Sasquatch. Woo! Big but uh, if you're looking to cross those two items together, you actually uh, you can do that, knock them both off your bucket list at the same time, because there is now a map that shows the location of Bigfoot sightings inside the path of, of uh, the eclipse. So now you can actually go find Bigfoot and watch the eclipse with him. You can be buddy buddies. Yeah. Look at that. Hand in hand, in case one of you is scared of the dark. The uh, Joshua Stevens, the guy that uh, created this map, says he's not a Bigfoot believer himself, but he had seen so many increasingly specific eclipse-related maps that he took a challenge, uh, took it upon himself to create a new one. Hmm. So he uh, found the places that had the most Bigfoot sightings inside the uh, the band that the eclipse will go across there, and uh, put it out there for you. So. There you go. Yeah, uh, we'll so put the links down in the uh, description below. So if you uh, want to take a look at the map and see if you can go hang out with Bigfoot yeah. for a couple hours. Yeah. There you go. Maybe we'll see Bigfoot. Maybe. You never know. Never know. Weird things happen during eclipses. Birds birds roost. Dogs go kind of crazy. And, uh, you and know. evil shadow genies uh, gain all power at Monster High. Yes. Stop it. Yeah, sorry. My daughter's it's really not an right eclipse. Right. It's more it's the giant so snake is devouring the ashamed. sun and we have to we have oh I'm sorry, that was like two thousand years ago. I wasn't even listening. With the giant snake <laughs> anyway. But anyway guys, that's gonna pretty much wrap it up today. Uh, so yeah, if you've got something that we might have missed, put those down in the comments below. Make sure you check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh do all the YouTubes as well. Make the sure liking, you guys... Yeah. The sharing. The subscribing. Thumbs up. We love seeing thumbs up on our videos, Commenting, guys. Commenting, yeah. Um, the, the bell. I almost can't get that out. The bell. He's, he's the bell. having... I'm having problems Speaking today. problems today. Uh, yeah, and make sure you guys you know put those comments in there. We want to hear your thoughts, uh, suggestions mm -hmm. as well. Uh, yes, yeah, Scoochie. Turn post notifications on on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, turn mm -hmm. post notifications on on Instagram and Twitter. We are actually doing a better job of tweeting. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to tweet once yeah. or twice yeah. a day. Now it's not only just Scoochie with the login. I gave it to, to Dana. I've had the login for quite some time, actually. I just, but I mean, most of my time when it comes to the show is spent editing episodes and putting together stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I don't really get around to doing much uh, of the posting. I do on Facebook every once in a while if I happen to be on there. But, uh, so yeah, that's going to wrap it. Uh, we'll see you guys back here tomorrow with uh, part three of our 13 weeks, weeks. Uh, ordeal 13 there. Weeks of Halloween. Going back to some cryptids. Yep. So until then, guys. You know what? And now your Russian clip of the day.